Hey, what's up, guys? It's Teacher Ben. This is my fourth uh, fourth video of the day. I've I've gone into a lot of advice about uh, pursuing your Olympic dreams, pursuing professional athletics, and I want to kind of use a case study here uh, to to let everybody know um, what what works uh, as far as college athletics and what works in professional athletics. So. You know, I can tell you that I did earn uh, four four or five hundred dollars uh, as a professional runner, quote quote unquote professional runner. If you call a guy who earns five hundred dollars a professional runner, you know, I think my my expertise on this may be very limited. Does that stop me from having an opinion? Uh, no. Uh, you know, I may be. I I believe I'm pretty smart as far as uh, what's really happening in sports. Um, you know. From a young age, I was able to uh, memorize very minuscule statistics, um, you know, uh, so, uh, yeah, and, you know, so uh, what I want to say is that, you know, I did follow certain athletes and there were news stories and, you know, who knows what the news, sto the news media is doing with these stories, but uh, I do want to go into a case study here. Uh, this is of the, of the uh, attempt to be a professional athlete. Uh, this particular athlete I want to ha examine here is Tim Tebow. Okay, so you know, and really, as far as as far as an athlete, uh, you know, who is cool looking, my idol was always Kobe Bryant. Now, as far as a person who's leading a wonderful life, you know, and I'm not going to say Kobe didn't lead a wonderful life or didn't have a good heart. But what I am going to say is that I believe Tim Tebow was really one of the one of had one of the better hearts. OK, so and I do want to say that, you know, I believe that uh, this athlete, Tim Tebow, when he was in college, you know, I do believe, uh, you know, it's it definitely appears that he was praying to God for his, you know, he was saying, God, if this is your will. Let me become famous so that I might, uh, you know, glorify your name. Now, that worked extravagant, okay? Nobody can really criticize a guy who, who proclaims God, you know, because even if you don't believe in God, you can't really criticize uh, the lifestyle because there's no proof behind any of these feelings, okay? So, you do, you know, by, by proclaiming God, uh, you will look good uh, socially, okay? Now, is that the right reason to proclaim God? No, no. And and I do want to say that I heard on the radio, don't look for your earthly father for advice. Look to your heavenly father for advice. Okay, so I think that this led uh, Tim Tebow. He What did he win? Two national championships. You know, I do believe he inspired his football division one coach to be a better person, to be a to be a better uh, Christian, you know, and so, you know, I, I can't really say because I, I don't really know these people. I do believe that if uh, I had been on that team, I do think this guy would have been an, a nice person. OK, so um, now let me examine what happened uh, in this particular case uh, to Tim Tebow once he tried to go professional. OK, so. What I want to say here as a precursor, because I think most people know the end of the story, um, is that professional sports, you have big egos, uh, you have a, kind of a cluster, a cluster, I, I don't want to use this word, but a cluster F-U-C-K of, of what's really happening. You know, you may have people who, who are very gifted genetically uh, who can be professional athletes with the wrong heart, you know, uh, you know, and they may play sports for themselves, uh, you know, and, and with earning millions of dollars, uh, you know, they may be very lost and they, they may be playing for themselves. So the professional athletics is really a cluster F U C K of, of people, of athletes, you know, and I, I do believe that, you know, there may be good Christian professional athletes, you know, uh, I met one at a athletes in action basketball camp, you know, the guy's name was Rod Foster. Uh, so there may be good people who get the job done as, as 
as Christians. Now let's examine what happened to Tim Tebow. Okay, so I, I believe he was drafted by the Denver Broncos and didn't really get a lot of playing time until injury struck the guy who was given the starting job. I think maybe the first and second guy got the got injury bugs and then Tebow gets plugged in as the third string. Okay, so uh, the the kind of knock on, on Tim Tebow was that he didn't have good mechanics. Uh, so so what happens is is Tebow gets in the game and he may get 150 or 160 yards, which isn't a real great statistic line, you know, and probably 50 yards rushing. Uh, but but what I do want to say is that uh, this guy, I believe, was a leader of men and he inspired the other people on uh, the Denver Broncos football team. He inspired other professional athletes. Uh, so. Uh, what happened was I think they won two, three or four games at the end of the year, got into the playoffs, and I think he led them through the wild card and maybe one more game and into the, I believe it was the AFC uh, championships where they did lose. Um, but what I want to say is that, you know, you can say what you want about the statistics uh, Tebow was putting up. Uh, you know, you can say what you want about his arm, his, his mechanics. Uh, you know, and it may be very legitimate. I have no idea what what a throwing motion of a quarterback should be, and I'm definitely not a coach. But uh, what I can say is that, you know, from what the news media portrayed uh, through ESPN.com, etc., uh, Yahoo News, you know, it seems that Tebow inspired his teammates. You know, I believe there were teammates who really had his back. Now, uh, you know, it seems that the coaches even in Denver didn't want to deal with a guy who couldn't uh, get his mechanics right, you know, so they did trade him to the New York Jets. And the New York Jets said, well, we don't really want you as a quarterback. Let's have you be a fullback. And, you know, you, we may let you be a, a backup quarterback. Uh, so um, I do think that, uh, you know, like I said, professional athletes is – in my opinion, and I, I may have no uh, legitimate, you know, a very small pool of legitimacy when I say this, uh, but I did say the athletes are kind of a cluster F-U-C-K of, of ideologies and, and egos and, and personalities. I want to use that word personalities uh, because they may, there may be a lot of truth to their personality too. Um, do I agree with it? No. But that goes for professional athletes. It also goes for coaches. You know, I do think, uh, you know, if uh, Tebow had ran into a Christian coach, you know, we may be talking about one of the greatest athlete, professional athletes ever. So I do think that, you know, there's a very, I don't, I don't believe that uh, the coaches who make up professional athletics are necessarily Christian people. All right. I may be entirely wrong and I may be very offensive to, uh, you know, if there are uh, coaches who are Christian people and they're watching this, they're like, what is wrong with this guy? But I do think that looking at some of these coaches, I don't, I, I feel like they're not Christian people. You know, uh, I can say I have read um, some books about some coaches and they don't necessarily talk about Christianity, they do say they stepped away from Christianity. Uh, so, um, and I can't really say that this uh, case study here with Tim Tebow really points to him running into Christian coaches. You know, I do think, uh, and I, I hate to say the guy's name, everybody probably already knows it, but uh, the guy he ran into at the New York Jets, I don't think he was a Christian uh, coach. Now, may may maybe he knows a lot of truth and he definitely uh should be exonerated as a guy who was successful in coaching uh moderately okay at the professional football level i don't think tim tebow got a fair shot you know uh why so um and i don't really want to go into the chances but into the opportunities about blaming who did get the starting job but i do want to say that um, you know, I do think that all of the fans were, were essentially like, why is the other guy starting and not Tebow? Everybody, there are so many fans who love Tebow. I think it put a lot of pressure on the guy who got the starting job. And, uh, 
you know, the guy who got the starting job was kind of like, do I deserve to be here? And it kind of ruined his career too. And then, and then we are essentially like, Hey, you know, uh, now that the season is ruined, let's give Tebow a shot, you know, and let's give him, let's give him four or five series. And then, and if he doesn't perform, we're going to yank his ass. Okay. So I don't think that's right either. And, you know, and it's kind of like, Hey, you know, now that you've spent, uh, 67% of the season sitting on the sidelines, not getting a chance, all of a sudden, get in there, get in there. You're kind of throwing into the, throwing into the war all of a sudden. And, you know, essentially, uh, Tebow doesn't really do a wonderful job, uh, given that chance now that he's thrown into the mix. Um, and then, and then we essentially have a period where he tries to, uh, walk on, with the New England Patriots, but the kind of reputation is, you know, uh, this guy is kind of a distraction because the fans want him to play. He doesn't have the right throwing motion. I think that was unfair to him, but you know, it's kind of like, like now that you've kind of had a horrible year, now we're going to ask you to get back in there right now and turn it around right now, you know, and I don't think that was right, you know, and I do, and, and, you know, I do think Tebow tried very hard and even like one year off and then trying to be a professional, what was it, a tight end, you know. And so he's trying all these positions because the coaches don't give him a chance at being a quarterback. They're they're misdiagnosing his ability to uh, lead the men as a as a as a social as a social leader. OK, and and they're misdiagnosing, um, you know, if we do give this under talented guy a chance to lead the team will he come through at the crucial moments i believe he would have okay and he's trying to be a fullback for the new england patriots this is not going to work you can't really train yourself at the age of whatever he was 28 29 a different position you know so that's weird and then he goes on to the jacksonville jaguars tries to be a tight end and he's trying to reinvigorate his baseball career at the age of 30. You know, it's really weird, but, uh, you know, hats off to the guy's effort. And, you know, he always gave God the chance to give him the, give him the opportunity, uh, to, to shine at professional athletics. And what I want to say is I've talked to one of my friends about this and that is, you know, um, maybe there's a reason why, uh, God doesn't really shine through in professional athletics. Maybe God doesn't really give a SHIT who our professional athletes are. Okay. Does he really care uh, who, who is the, who is the, who is the leader on ESPN.com who gets adorned on ESPN.com? Okay. So uh, yeah. So, you know, you know, and, and so what I want to say is, you know, God bless uh, Tim Tebow for, for the, accomplishments he made in college and giving it a try at professional sports. So uh, the moral, the, the idea here is what I want to say is I don't really think that, you know, these people uh, who are the leaders of the coaches at the professional level and your general managers, the, uh, the, the guys who are owners, um, you know, they may not really have, uh, have a, have a, have a relationship with God. They may do, they may, but I, I'm just want to say, I don't think they do. So, uh, you know, so if you are an aspiring professional athlete, uh, I can say, uh, you know, give your, give your life to God and go for it in college. It may work in college, but I'm not sure it's going to work at the professional level. Okay. So, uh, just let that be known. That's my opinion. Have a nice day and God bless everybody. I apologize for, for the negativity I've expressed today. And we do need to kind of uh, read the book, The Secret, that, that it makes us in tune to our positive feelings. So I apologize for all the negativity, but I do think we need to talk about the truth here. Uh, have a nice day. This is Teacher Ben. Bye-bye.